Hey guys, welcome to Man Card Mondays, episode number four. How do I punch fear in the face? Let's take a look. Mitch Matthews, welcome to Man Card Monday. How are you, brother? I am doing fantastic. It's an honor to get to be here with you, except for I want, I, I'm realizing I should have been wearing flannel. Yeah. I feel like less of a man. It's uh, part of the dress code. Uh, it's That's like step 72. And how That you- was not in my memo. That was not that's in my memo, but I, I, will, I will persevere. I will persevere. <laughs> yes, you will. Yes, you will, which you are so great at. And you are so great at a whole... A lot of things. In fact, I know you are a professional podcaster. I can call you that, right? I, you can call me that. Yes. I call you a lot of things. Professionals pretty broad and yes. <laughs> so therefore we will go with it. Yes. You do a whole lot of things. Uh, and uh, I know you sent me uh, some notes because like, you do a lot of these kinds of things. And so you're organized and you had some of the highlights of things you do. Sure. Uh, and uh, yeah, like I'm just excited. I've known you for a while. It's awesome to have you on here, but you are the creator of the Dream Think Do podcast. <laughs> Yep. Uh, you are also a success coach. I love that term. Uh, I just, that's when I think of you, I think success all the time. So why not? Well, I appreciate it. It doesn't mean I have to have it to coach it, you know, but it's uh, absolutely. Yeah. I've been doing that since 2002. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I also love you describe yourself as a serial, serial entrepreneur, way better than a serial killer. So that's true. Sometimes I'm sure it's, it's some of the same skill sets, but we try to keep it healthy. Yeah. And then a best-selling author, but most importantly, he's a husband, a dad, and a lifelong learner living in uh, Des Moines, Iowa. So, Woo-hoo. Mitch, welcome to the show. It is awesome to have you here today, especially uh, given our topic, which uh, I think actually I stole this phrase from you when I first thought of it: "How to punch fear in the face." So, one of these bad boys. One yeah. of these bad boys. Yes. Yeah. So you and I were just talking about this a little bit ahead of hitting record today. Just, yep. uh, I was just sharing a little bit of my heart. And here's, here's where I'm at th- with this whole thing. Like fear is a huge uh, part of my life. It turns out every day, like there's something that manages to make me a little nervous or freak me yep. out or, you know, the old sweaty palms or a hundred percent or whatever it is. And yep. I've been thinking about this a lot lately, mostly because I've been working on some projects on my house, flooring, trim, painting, table saws, all kinds of stuff. That's God like, bless you. Yes. Totally out of my comfort zone. And so fear, I've just been thinking about fear a lot as I've been doing manly stuff with my hands or whatever. Yeah. I just kind of been thinking about the ways that fear like just holds us back. And I start thinking about what, what is possible and what yep. uh, could be. And, and so I think as we think about these key concepts, key questions, like things that guys need to wrestle with, if they want to experience God's best for their life, which when I use man card as a metaphor, that's what I'm talking about, right? Like you're checking yep. all the boxes and you're living the life that God has created you to live. Uh, I think having a healthy relationship with fear and being able to navigate it, or as you would say, punch it in the face uh, to show a little bit of your cards and you're thinking on some of this stuff. Uh, I, I think this is incredibly important. So I thought today, maybe just uh, if you want to tell us a little bit more about who you are, if there's any details you want us uh, to know, you can throw those in there certainly. Yep. Um, but also then like, yeah, what does fear look like for you and why, why are you so passionate about this topic? So, yeah, well, I think, I think you hit the high points as far as like my professional background, uh, you know, entrepreneur since 2002, I was in corporate sales before that, um, uh, you know, uh, I married up like you, mm-hmm. I married up, uh, we have two boys, uh, being, being a husband and dad two of my absolute favorite things in the planet, uh, that, that kind of thing. So I think you hit those, those points. So we can dive right into the fear yeah. subject because it is near and dear to my heart um, because I've had a heck of a relationship with fear as well. And if, if anybody's watching this, that feels like, oh, I never have to deal with fear at all. You can probably, you know, just hit pause or go to the next video. But for anybody that's ever felt fear or you know that there's been fear where, it's almost held you back or it did hold you back or you said no to something you should have said yes to because of fear. Just know you're in the right place. Um, uh, because I grew up 
a scared kid, like a uh, really scared kid. Like um, I had health issues when I was growing up too, that they couldn't quite figure out. They figured out later on in life. So I grew up a sick kid and I was prone to worry. So I would stay home sick from school and I would worry. Um, and so I got really, really good at it. Um, and then sadly in high school, like they started to figure out some of my health issues. Um, and I didn't get better at handling fear. I got better at hiding fear. Oh. And so I looked, you know, happy, relatively successful on the outside, but it was just eating me up on the inside. And, um, I, I will give total credit to God, um, uh, for the revelation and the relationship that has helped me to, um, I, I won't say overcome fear. That's a little bit why we talk about punch and fear in the face, because it's going to come regularly and we have to know how to deal with it. And, um, uh, but I really do give credit to God and my faith for not, you know, helping me to move out of that. I'm going to hide this into, I'm going to deal with this mode. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, I, I like that idea as well, because when you punch something in the face, right, like the idea, it, at least in all the fist fights that I've been in, which right. is not many, uh, <laughs> uh, there's been one, I guess, or two, yeah. but, uh, you know, like the idea is back off. Right. And I think that's probably more realistic because I, I, and this is one of the things that drives me nuts is I think somewhere along the way, I got this idea that that fear wasn't a part of the equation, especially when you have Jesus in your life, when you are right. Like once we have it all figured out, I shouldn't have any fear at all or be tempted to fear. Right. But right. I mean, the Bible talks about fear more than anything else. So yeah. you figure God knew that that was going to be something we were going to be working with. Plus I really believe in God and Jesus and the Holy spirit. And I really believe there's an enemy of God and he's, he's a punk, but he's really good at what he does. And yeah. his number one tool in his toolbox is fear. Yeah. So uh, he has many different facets of that tool. Um, so of course, God's going to, you know, uh, teach us about it, talk to us about it. Um, also allow us to be in situations from time to time where we have to lean on him. Right. Um, and, and that kind of thing. So absolutely. Plus, I don't know about you, but uh, I am a huge fan of scripture. I'm terrible at remembering it, especially word for word and or where it's at in the Bible, but I'm pretty good <laughs> at remembering stories and themes. Yeah. But I'm also a huge fan of science because I think science um, in many ways shows us how God's worked, you know, or how, how amazing God is. And there's a lot of brain science that goes into fear and yeah. overcoming fear. So if we want to get into some of that too, and what's crazy about it is, once you start to understand that, you also see it play out in scripture too. Yeah. Okay. Well then let's jump right into that. One of the things I'd love to get to at some point, if we come back to it is, yeah. you know, maybe some stories of ways, cause I, I always come back to the why, why is this journey worth taking? Right. Like yep. that, hold it back. You and I could both tell stories of breakthroughs. We've had cool things that almost didn't happen. Right. Because right. We're scared, but let's jump first though, to this question. Right. So how do you punch fear in the face? And as you kind of lay out maybe your strategy or what's worked for you, like throw some science in there if you feel like it. So absolutely. Absolutely. So, and here's the thing I did do a little bit of martial arts, especially in college. Uh, so I did a ton of Taekwondo and then I have a buddy who does Aikido and I don't know if you know Aikido, but Aikido is kind of the uh, Steven Seagal thing where they're like flipping around and all that stuff. I never did it. But, ponytail, um, or ponytail. That's how I do. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. And yeah, always black, <laughs> black hair. Right. And sometimes a really black goatee. That's fine. Um, but sometimes it's, it's a full on punch on the face. And sometimes it's more of an Aikido move where we say, I see you and you actually can grab it, but then move that power. Like Aikido is beautiful because you use your opponent's strength and speed against them. Right. And, and sometimes when we talk about worry and punching in the face, sometimes it's full on Taekwondo punch or karate punch to the face. Sometimes it's more of an Aikido move where we're moving it to the side. So it does help to talk, especially, you know, God has shown me numerous times and, and uh, gentle in most cases where he would show me how, um, you know, sometimes I would avoid situations or I would say no to things that I should have said yes to because of fear. And then sometimes he, he reminded me that even when I said yes, and I did the thing, I totally missed out on the beauty of it because I was worried and I was fearful, right? Um, there was an example, I, I've told this story at the men's retreat last year, whenever it was, 
300 years ago before COVID, but, you know, I had this experience of climbing a, a mountain in Montana and I really, you know, I felt like, wow, you know, I feel, I said yes. And, uh, you know, I, I felt really excited about it until we started to climb this mountain, which freaked me out. It was two days of hiking. So through some of the most beautiful country in the world, um, you know, and, and uh, mountain flowers and mountain goats and mountain streams and lakes, absolutely gorgeous. And I missed all of it. Yeah. Because I was consumed by worry. Even though I was in the midst of it, I was I was just consumed by worry. And I kept telling myself, which was my coping me mechanism at the time, I'll really enjoy this once we're once we're done, right? Like once once we summited, that's when I'll enjoy it. And long story short, we actually uh got to the top of that mountain, it's Granite Peak in in uh the Beartooth Mountain Range in Montana. And uh, we were almost struck by lightning. So in the very moment I thought, oh, this is when I could let down and really enjoy myself, lightning breaks out and starts flashing all around us. And we had to run for our lives, kind of a funny story. But when we got done, you know, God showed me because there wasn't a lot of talking at the, you know, the rest of that day. When we survived that, it was pretty quiet the rest of the day. And God showed me, he's like, this is the way you've been living your life. You've been, you know, saying yes or saying no. But when you say yes, then you worry the whole time telling yourself you'll really enjoy life or you'll really, you know, be in, in relationship. You'll really uh, take things in and, and be in the moment once this thing's done or once this thing's checked off your list or whatever. And he's like, but then lightning strikes and you're on to that next thing. He's like, you're missing life. I don't want you to miss life anymore. And so I came back from the mountain and said, all right, show me, show me. And what's amazing is there's there's some um, incredible verses like Joshua one, uh, you know, multiple times God tells Joshua, who's one of the boldest, most badass warriors in the Old Testament, you know, it's time to go into the promised land. And you see in chapter one of the book of Joshua, God's having to repeatedly tell him, be bold and courageous, which right. means he was not bold or courageous. <laughs> he wasn't being full of courage at the time. He was probably scared out of his mind and God was having to tell him, be bold and courageous. But what I love is he says, be bold and courageous for I'm with you. And I think that's where any of the solutions that we're going to talk about start to actually believe that God is with us. God loves us. God's actually in a good mood. Uh, God is wildly creative and unlimited, right? So it starts with that. Right. But what I love is the Bible doesn't stop there. It goes further. So right. uh, there's there's, as you well know, Philippians is one of the most incredible books in the New Testament written by Paul while he's in a prison cell, which is just absolutely incredible. And he says some of the most annoying and also some of the most profound things, especially in chapter four, when he talks about worry, because he says, don't worry about anything. Right. And if you're worried, that's one of those, you know, are you kidding me? You know, yeah. one of the last things you want to hear is somebody saying, oh, don't worry. Right. But what I love about Paul is that Paul actually gives us some brain science and we don't even realize it. But Paul, Paul doesn't stop at don't worry. Right. He says, don't worry. But then he gives us some specific strategy. He says, don't worry. Instead, look to these things. Mm -hmm. Right. So one of the things that's beautiful about how our brain works is that there's a part of our brain, it's called the amygdala, and it's a little bit, it's like an almond size part of our brain. And it's what I call the bodyguard. And it is constantly scanning to see if we're in danger or not. And it's pretty amazing. Like it's, it's, it's very astute at picking up on potential dangers. It's horrible at figuring out whether those dangers are real or not. So everything to the amygdala is a red line danger. So, you know, tigers and bears, red line danger. Um, <laughs> potential risk because you're going to give a presentation, uh, red line danger. So it's not really good at, at knowing the difference. Now, there's another part of that brain called the basal ganglia, and it's what I call the project manager. Okay. And the project manager is the part of our brain that's always looking for systems. So the basal ganglia is like what allows you to leave your house in the morning and pull into hope you know, 15 minutes later and go, I don't remember much of my drive. Like that's, you know what I mean? Because your basal ganglia is constantly saying, I got this. I've got a system for this. Now, what's great about the basal ganglia is it's constantly scanning for, for strategies, for systems, for, for processes. Um, the challenge is, is if the, if the basal ganglia or the basal ganglia and the amygdala start working together, the amygdala says, high alert. Basal ganglia says, I know what to do with that. Worry, Right then that's how especially us black belt level warriors can be at you know red line 60 miles an hour in 2.2 seconds worrying without even really knowing what got us there 
you don't have to admit you've done that, but I know I've done that. Where it's like, oh, why yeah. am I freaking out just because I glanced at the headline at the USA Today while I'm at the come and go, or because I, you know, scroll through my feed on Twitter and see this thing about, you know, death hornets, uh, you know, in South America. And it's like, oh, that's it. You know, 2020 is over. All that stuff, right? So we have to really watch out for the project manager and the bodyguard working together. Right now, yeah. here's where the brain steps in. And I think it's also what Paul was talking to. OK, so there's a third part of the brain that's called the, the prefrontal cortex. There's really these three parts when it comes to fear and worry. OK, so the basal ganglia, uh, you know, is is looking for systems. The amygdala is looking for danger. But the uh, the prefrontal cortex is what I call the boss. It's because that's where executive functions happening. Yeah. Um, the prefrontal cortex can interrupt that the, the project manager and the bodyguard and say, hey, uh, you know, we need to stop. We don't need to worry. We don't need to fear, right? And one of the best ways that it can do that is either by asking a question or be looking at, oh, looking at a different direction. So what I mean by that is what's beautiful about what Paul said is Paul said, uh, you know, don't worry about anything, but instead, right? Uh, think about these things, whatever is excellent, whatever is beautiful, whatever is gracious, whatever, you know, he, he starts to list these things. And that's, that's the prefrontal cortex kicking in and saying, yeah, I could worry, right? Yes. Uh, amygdala. Yes. That is a potential risk, but do we really need to worry about that? Right. Or is it, are we worried? Right. So what I love about the boss is the boss can step in and say, Hey, there could be other things we look at now. Sometimes we absolutely need to be looking at those things that are causing us worrying, saying, is there a bear? Is there a lion? Is there a dark alley we need to be aware of? And if that's the case, then we need to ask ourselves some questions. What can I do right now to actually address that? And if it's not a real fear, then to be able to say, where do I want to point my thinking? And that's exactly what Paul told us to do. And, uh, you know, he didn't know the science of the brain sitting in a jail cell, but at the same time, he knew the God that created the brain. So it totally makes sense that that, that would all connect up. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah. It, I mean, everything from, yeah, just the fact that you, the way you name those three parts of the brain, I think helps. I'm still back on the fact that I do drive blocks at a time. <laughs> and not remember Thank it. you, basal ganglia. It's, it's <laughs> incredible. But that's also like, that's the beauty of it. It's the strength and the weakness, right? It's that if it partners up with the bodyguard and says, oh, I got worry. That's why we can lose a day. Like I love Bill Johnson out in, at Bethel, yeah. uh, you know, church in, in, in Redding, California. He said once, he said there are days, you know, that that he will all of a sudden just start to feel like he'll realize he's feeling anxious. And one of his questions is, where did I leave my peace? Mm. And, and that's that's a great like question that your boss, you know, your executive, the, the executive function can ask the question, where did I lose my peace? Which allows you to go back and say, was it that headline? Yeah. Was it the way that my wife looked at me and she probably didn't mean anything by it, but I was like, oh, that look, you know, or was it, uh, you know, maybe it was an email or maybe it's because you've got a presentation coming up or maybe there's some problems with payroll and you've got to figure out a solution. All of those things. It's, it's important to say, okay, where did I lose my peace? Also though, to be able to say, all right, I'm not on my, I'm not by myself. I'm not on my own. So mm -hmm. it's important to, to remember what we talked about with Joshua, that we are not on our own as far as God is with us. But I think also, you know, coming back around to what you do so well, Andy is, I think as guys, it's easy to say, I got it. Don't yeah. worry about it. That's me. It's on me. I got it. Right. And I think God wants us to know we're not alone. He's with us, but also he's, he, he did not design us to be isolated, right? And no. that's what we tend to do too when we get scared is we tend to isolate. And being in a community, right? Being in a community of guys where you can be real, uh, right. one of the most powerful things that we can do when we're in the face of fear is to admit to a friend, a brother, right. a group of brothers, hey guys, this week, fear kicked my ass, right? right. But I, I'm better today than I was yesterday. And would you guys pray for me? Or this happened, what do you guys think, right? Like. It's, it's amazing 
yeah. what that also does to help the you know well, inner bodyguard and the inner po- project manager go, okay, yeah, you're right. Maybe this isn't an actual bear or saber tooth tiger. Well, and I, I have been personally amazed at even on my own, actually verbalizing some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I am nervous about this. Here right. is what most likely is going to happen. When you say that out loud, I think that I'm guessing, and I'm not a neuroscientist at all, but like I'm guessing verbalizing, right? It's engaging our body and our yep. mind in a in a more proactive and consuming way that kind of pushes those other things out of control. That's exactly way. neuroscience, baby. That's right. exactly right. Because the basal ganglia is trying to keep everything at the subconscious level because its job is to look for systems and to try to keep as little tension on your brain as possible. So it's like, I got this, I got this. Yeah. And just kind of keeping you in that mode, which is a subconscious mode prefrontal cortex engages. And, and once, like you said, you know, there was a study done uh, and it was actually a, 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 it's one of those studies where you're like, duh, right? But <laughs> yeah, they right. basically looked into, they had a group of people that were uh, self-identified as worriers and anxious. What they did was they had them inventory the things they were worried about. And then they tracked whether in fact those things came into being or not. And uh, basically it was less than 10% of any of the things people were worried about actually happened, right? Um, and, and and I think we know that. I think we kind of deep down on the inside, uh, you know, reasoning know that that's probably the case. But at the same time, what's amazing about that is, like you said, writing it down on a piece of paper going, okay, that's sometimes it, it could be very real, right? But most of the time you're like, okay, uh, I've worried about that kind of thing and it never happened before, or it's almost, you get it down on paper. It's okay. Okay. That's almost laughable yeah. now that I see it written out. Right. Or like you said, verbalize it to someone else. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So there's lots of next steps with this, lots of different strategies. I mean, we've just talked about a few here. I remember even listening uh, to another guy, uh, Michael Hyatt talk about, he's yeah. a public speaker and yep. You know, he chooses to use his anxiety as a reminder uh, and motivation to be prepared when he goes to give a talk, for example. Yep. I kind of think of that as what you were talking about, using your enemy's power against them, right? Yep. Uh, to take all that momentum and energy. Exactly create. right. Yes, like this is this is going to help me uh, get better at this. One of the things that I have learned, though, is that this is a process, right? Like yep. to think that you're going to be able to, to get stronger in these things uh, instantly is... You know, and, and sometimes Bible verses don't help. I Is it Corinthians that says, you know, we take every thought captive to Christ? And I'm like, what does that mean? Because I'm not good at that. Like, how do you? That's right. Yeah. I might be better at it tomorrow, but I'm kind of <laughs> sucking wind today. Yeah, and it's it, absolutely. absolutely. In the authority of scripture, I absolutely believe that we do have the power to do those things. Yep. Uh, as sons and daughters, uh, if any women are watching this as well, of sure. parents, right? Uh, but we also have to understand, yeah, that we are, the, the journey is long and, you know, sometimes we're a crockpot transformation experience rather than a microwave. God God does both. We, right. we know people that have both sides of that coin in their story as well. If, if you were going to point somebody though, if somebody's energized by this and they say, yes, like, I've got some things in front of me I've really wanted to do. Fear has kept me from it. I want to move forward in this. Where where would you encourage them to get started? Uh, yeah. Getting more proactive with punching fear in the face. Absolutely. So I, you know, it's one of those things where uh, I am a recovering warrior. I'm also a recovering perfectionist. Uh, so I don't know if anybody else could, you know, identify with that. It's kind of one of those, it's really hard to do something unless I know it's going to go really well. And all of those kinds of things. I had to kind of let go of that as as well. Now, obviously, it's always good to go for excellence, but to say, oh, it's got to be perfect. And the reason why I bring that up is I think with, with breaking through fear or doing something new or stepping out and, and doing something you feel called to do, I always say, what are some ways that you can start small? Not perfectly, but start small. I mean, it's amazing when you think about it, like even 15 minutes a day doesn't seem like a lot. You know, it's it's like, waiting in line uh, for something, waiting for a meeting to start, waiting for Netflix to, you know, uh, what a re- uh, you know, buffer, all that stuff, right? 15 minutes, but 15 minutes a day, five days a week, that adds up to in a year, about 60 hours wow. of time, right? Um, and so I always say, start small, find ways to start small. So if you really are dealing with fear, to be able to say, okay, 
I'm not going to try to walk around like, you know, Clint Eastwood at his best with a glint in my eye saying, I got this handled, but I'm going to try to worry 15 minutes less today. Mm -hmm. Right. Just start small and say for that 15 minutes, think of it as a fear fast, right? Like, you know, the, people tell you to fast from food. It's like, well, if you can go just an hour longer, that's a fast. That's the beginning of a fast fear fast to say, all right, I know that I'm kind of worried about this thing, but for 15 minutes, I'm not going to worry about this thing. And I'm going to divert my thinking. I'm going to point it to other things or I'm going to point it to solutions, you know, like the Michael Hyatt uh, kind of approach, that kind of thing. So 15 minutes, or it might be to say, all right, I'm really scared to start this thing. And part of the reason why you're scared is you don't know the outcome. You don't know how much time or money you're going to have to commit. You don't know if you're going to look like an idiot as you do it, but to be able to say, all right, what can I do 15 for 15 minutes? to move me down this path. I mean, you're working on your flooring, right? Like my guess is you didn't just start. Well, maybe you did, but yeah. like that whole thing of saying, I got to figure out the flooring, right? It's, it's more so to say, all right, I'm going to watch one video today yeah. to help me figure out how I measure this thing. Right. right? And then I'm going to watch another video tomorrow about how I do the tongue and groove. And I'm going to watch another video and I'm going to, you know, how do I cut this stuff? It's that kind of thing where 15 minutes a day, those add up and starting small, whatever that might be, over the course of time, that really does add up. And what's beautiful about that is while you're doing that, to just say, all right, during that 15 minutes, I'm going to be intentional about, all right, Lord, this is the 15 minutes. Um, I'm, I'm not going to go for, you know, I'm going to try not to be afraid. I'm going to try to think about you. I'm going to try to think about that scripture. I'm going to try to think about uh, you being a good God that loves me. Those kinds of things. Making that commit commitment intentionally to say, I know you're with me. Yeah. Um, and then when you're doing those 15 minutes where you're trying to learn something or experiment or experience something to be able to say, okay, Lord, I know you're with me because you're a creative God. Show me what you want me to see. Yeah. Help me to be caught up in that, you know? And sometimes it could be as simple as, you know, on a day like today where the sun's out to just take a couple of minutes to say, all right, today there's a whole lot of crap going on, yeah. but I'm going to take a couple of minutes and really enjoy the sunshine. Right. Or really enjoy the color of the changing leaves. Now that might seem kind of touchy feely or cotton candy, but you know, that's also a part of the Philippians verse too, right? Is mm -hmm. that look at what, look for what is amazing and beautiful, uh, you know, worthy of praise. Um, and, and again, there's brain science in that, uh, but there's also a whole lot of peace that can be in it too. But start small yeah. um, and start today. Um, don't try to get it perfect and don't try to do it 24 seven. I'm going to at least get it 15 minutes and you, you know, you'll be able to say, I'm not where I want to be yet, but I'm better than I was yesterday. So one of the commonalities with what you're talking about with the flooring project, right. Is when I started to get overwhelmed, it was because I was thinking about eight steps at a time. And yes, so like for me, I, and I've had to say this to myself a lot lately, like one thing at a time, one yep. step at a time, one day at a time. Yep. Uh, and one of the tools I found incredibly helpful, John Eldridge uh, has a uh, an app you can download called the One Minute Pause. And it literally nice. is a phone, visual audio experience that just kind of pulls you out. It pulls me at least out of the chaos of whatever I've, you know, I've got myself all churned up in the yeah. internet and it just is an opportunity to stop, take a moment, hand some things over uh, and reset. And so there's lots of stuff, guys. We'll put tons of links in the uh, show notes for this, things that... Um, that we have found helpful and you guys can chime in your own in the comments uh, as well. Mitch, I got one more question for you today and we got to wrap this awesome. up. Um, what is possible? What is possible for the people listening to this if they choose to take uh, this riskier journey, right? This less comfortable journey and to grow in, in appropriate ways, their relationship with fear. What, what do you believe is possible for them? What are they going to experience? What are they going to receive? in the midst of that, uh, why take this journey? Okay. So, uh, I'm glad we got four hours for this question, right? <laughs> okay. So tucked in, tucked into Ephesians, which is one of the most kick-ass, uh, books in the Bible. Uh, but tucked into Ephesians three, Paul is talking about what God, what Jesus, the kind of life that God and Jesus wants for us. And he uses this word, uh, it's a Greek word, pyrosis, which is, um, it's, it's a word that says exceedingly abundantly beyond, mm -hmm. um, exceedingly abundantly is like the best we can do to try to capture pyrosis. But, but Paul says, um, if you understand how much God, how much Jesus 
loves you. How and he he, he gets specific, like mm. how broad, how deep, how wide, right? If we understand how much God loves us, we can live a life that's exceedingly abundantly beyond what we could hope, dream, or imagine. Okay, so it's in Ephesians three, and and that like stopped me in my tracks because I think most people live a life that's gray. Like it's pretty good, it's nice. Uh, I think it's better than my parents, but I'm not quite sure. Right? That's not what that's not what Paul's talking about. Paul's talking about a life that's exceedingly abundantly beyond what we could hope, dream, or imagine. And I don't know that we necessarily. Like, I love. I've been getting into the Mission Impossible movies again lately. I don't know about you, but I love the Mission Impossible movies. And and it's one of those things that I don't think God's calling us to live at an Ethan Hunt level of danger all the time. But I do think that he's calling us to a life of adventure. Mm -hmm. And I do love Ethan Hunt in the, you know, Tom Cruise, I know can go a little wonky sometimes, but like Ethan Hunt, that character, he always says yes. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's what God wants us to be. He wants us to live a life where the yes, sometimes going to be easy and fun. The yes is sometimes going to be hard, but you know, it's going to be an adventure. And I think if we truly say, all right, Lord, I know it's not always going to be easy. Um, but you tell me you want me to have a life that's exceedingly abundantly beyond what we could hope, dream, or imagine. I want to say yes to that. So show me how and help me to be bold and courageous as I do. Yeah. Um, whether we're in Iowa or Mumbai or whether we're wherever you're listening to this, um, I think that's what God wants for us. He doesn't want us to live a life of constant gray. He wants us to live a life that we are fully alive and that we help others to do that um, and to not do it alone, but to do it in community and to do it with him. And as we do that, I think it could be pretty amazing. And I say that again, not lightly as I say that as a former black belt warrior that's still, still able to get there in a two second time frame. Um, but I think I'm just more aware of how much I need God, but also how much more I want to say yes to what God has for us. Awesome. Mitch, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Guys, thank you for taking the time uh, to listen to this whole episode, to uh, join us wherever it is that you're catching this. Uh, guys, our prayer for you is that you would live that life. Uh, our mission as a men's ministry is to see every man filled with hope. And, mm -hmm. and I continue to believe hope is this audacious belief that the best is yet to come, right? That yes, your story might be incredible right now, but guess what? God has even more uh, for you. And so we want to be men who sees that, who continue to dive as deep as we can into whatever, I love that word adventure uh, that God has for us. And so we're going to get after it together. Uh, this YouTube channel is part of that. Our Facebook group, our online community is a part of that. Uh, we have small groups and resources and classes and weekly text messages designed all to equip you uh, in all these different facets of life that just seem to produce fear in us sometimes. And so- yes. Whatever we can do to connect with you, to encourage you, to equip you, to be able to navigate those situations and those parts of your life, uh, we would love to do that. Again, links uh, are below in the description of this video. So with that, guys, we're going to say uh, have a great rest of your week, and we will catch you soon. Adios. Adios.